Looking to start a business or wanting to scale an existing one to a six plus figure business? Let WJJ Brands coach you through a clear and actionable business plan in 30 days or less. Their program is designed for your ease and success. I know you have the question, what is covered in the program? A couple things, sales strategy, price strategy, executive summary, business operations, and a few other things related to financial forecasting and product service offerings. Enjoy $250 off the total of the business development program with promo code BLK250. Resonate with you. It's, it, to me, it kind of piggybacks a little bit off of what Sam said and be a student of the game. So I, I tell my son all the time, you know, the smartest person in the room is the person who knows nothing because you're willing to learn everything. Uh, and so it's fun. I like that one. Yeah, fun. Too. Write that yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> you said take notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> get, my, get, my, get my notes right. Yeah. And I have to tell him that because he's he's kind of like me. You know, he uh, he lives in the moment. He the city. Yeah, city yeah. too. Yeah, so <laughs> two point oh. So he so a lot of times I see some of the things that I used to do as a kid, and I see him doing the same things, and I'm like, well, hold on, son, wait a minute. Like, you don't have to do that. You don't always have to be the first to respond. Right. You don't always have to be the first to say something. Sometimes it's better to just sit back and see what everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm. Be a fly on yeah. the wall and just listen yeah. and see what's going on and learn. Because I may think I know something and I have a perspective on it, but then you come and say something and have a totally different perspective. And you just you tell like, me hmm, something. Yeah. You like, uh-huh. Now it's got my wheels turning. I was like, going to okay. say this, but I'm not going to say it no more. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. And so that will be my response. The smartest person in the room. Knows nothing because you're willing to learn everything. Absolutely. I like that. I dreamed about this opportunity in this moment for a long time. For a long time. You know, my dream has become a reality now, and it's uh you know the best for my ride. Best for my ride. Best for my ride. The devil wouldn't have existed if I would have lived in BC. Them type of haters never make it spread and love at this speed. Started rapping back when cash money dropped, bling bling. This the sequel to the Dr. King. I have a dream speech. Martin was peace, now marches like MMA. The street don't got feelings, they hearts is in the bank. We need a hundred black billionaires in USA. And a black Wall Street on every MLK. I'm paid now. I had a dream, and my ancestors said these dead presidents, my slaves now. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another episode of Black Fly on the Wall. Today's episode is How to Become a Highly Effective Man, which I think is very critical in, the being, in, in being successful. You have to be highly effective at what you do. Um, you have to be highly effective in your personal life, your business life, your spiritual life. You have to be well balanced in order to achieve a lot of things in life. Um, but before we get into it, we're going to start off by introducing our guest to my right. Introduce yourself, Brent. Uh, Brent Hayes, also known as uh, Brent City from Durham, uh, North Carolina Central, uh, owner of the Living Room Bar and Lounge in Durham, uh, minority owner in Bedlam Vodka. Nice. Amongst some other things. Well, cheers. Everybody I'm cheers out of Bedlam Vodka. Cheers Bedlam. Yes, sir. Sure. All right, to my left, introduce yourself. Y'all know what it is, man. Back again, Sam I am, <laughs> the master man. We here with it, just loving it, man. Just being around some good people, so happy yes, to be sir. here. Yeah. <clears throat> Colton Palmer. A little regular now. Hey, yeah, I'm on yeah. back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I, was say, I was trying to work on my intro. Actually, y'all <laughs> but uh, Colton Palmer from the Bull City, of course. Uh, work with Brent at the, the living room. Also minority owner in Bedlam Vodka. So just happy to be here, man. Happy to be around some good brothers. Okay. All right. Then, uh, so, fellas, how to become a highly effective man? Let's start off with this. What are a few things you would tell your 13 year old self now? Now that you're at whatever age you are, we ain't calling nobody age. Cause <laughs> everybody look young up in here. But what, are, what is one thing? Let's start off with one thing. What is one thing you would tell your 13 year old self? Go, Brent, go first. One thing I would probably tell my 13 year old self is that uh, you ain't got to get it all today. Mm hmm. Um, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And just because you see people around you that have certain things, understand that it takes uh, work and effort to be able to get those things. And you don't need it today. That's right. If you put in the work and you really dedicate yourself to your craft, <clears throat> then eventually you'll reap what you sow. Yeah. So I want to I want to piggyback off of that one and just say you ain't got to do it alone. 
right? I think Bingo. That's a good, that's put a lot of pressure on yourself. Uh, me, especially speaking for myself, I, I believe I put a lot of pressure on myself growing up, like just trying to make things happen, whether it's for my family or for myself, um, and just realizing you ain't got to do it by yourself. So, so teamwork. Yeah, absolutely. I got some good ones, man. I tell my thirteen-year-old self, I would say failure, you know, is is something you need to experience mm-hmm. to understand how how big the win is. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, coming from my wrestling career and everything, you know, it was win or lose. It was, you know, I feel like life was based on that, but it was more so when, once I realized about around thirteen years old, um, I put a lot of a lot of pressure on myself. My pops just. One one day he told me, you know, I don't care if you win or lose. I just want you to see put see you put forth your best effort, and that changed everything. Once I realized, okay, I just got to go out there and scrap, and and my parents will be happy with the outcome. That's you know that changed changed my career, the mm-hmm. trajectory of my career, and I just carried that into life. So I, if I could tell my my thirteen year old self anything, it would be, hey, just just keep scrapping, keep pushing, mm-hmm. and keep it moving. You learn from those from those losses. And don't be afraid of them too. Don't be yeah. yeah. I would, Correct. Absolutely. And, you know, something you said is real key in regards to failure is that uh, one of my favorite uh, spiritual advisors is uh, Sadhguru. And he has a quote that says, um, to a well-balanced man, uh, failure doesn't exist. Fall down a hundred times, a hundred lessons to be learned. Mm-hmm. So it's about how you how you critically uh, examine your life experiences, right? Um, you go through an upset. You go through a breakup. You go through a bad business deal. Um, you can choose in that moment to harper on what happened to you or how it happened or how can it not happen again, right? You, we have we all have the decision to look at these things and say, all right, this is the journey that I've been on. These are the gems that I picked up along my journey, and this is how I'm going to apply it uh, in the new, near future. Um, you know, one thing that echoed a lot of you all's responses echoed is a lot of humbleness. What would you, what would you say what role does being humble play in being highly effective? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. Got them shook. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got me thinking. You got yeah. me thinking. You got, got the wheels turning, man. Yeah, yeah. You got my being humble is key. Um, it's, it's very key because I feel like it allows you to you know, kind of realize and figure out who you are as a person, right? And and, and being humble is is. is something that's needed in that journey of going from a young man to an actual man. Um, Mm -hmm. And like I said, it falls back on that. You know, you don't, you ain't got to get it all today. Um, The humbleness in you should allow you to be able to trust the journey and trust the process. The cockiness in you would allow you to say, nah, I need it right now. Ego. Ego. So, you know, I feel like a lot of, a lot of times, especially in climbing in the era that we grew up in it's a piggyback off what he says it's almost like everybody's competing Mm -hmm. everybody's competing and that's the ego and that's the cockiness but the humbleness will make everybody come together because it's always strength and power in numbers absolutely nobody's ever been able to do it by themselves but once you come together as a team and we had to kind of figure that out we did we we had to figure it out we started out i started out doing my thing in durham and see colton's a year behind me and so when I first started out, they were still in high school and they were coming to the events. But then when they started doing the events, they were doing their thing on their side and we were doing our thing on our side. And it wasn't probably until the last six or seven years that we actually came together. But in that six or seven years, we've done more in six or seven years than, you know, I and did. And you could have done time. by yourself. Exactly. And so that's the humbleness part, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to be humble. Put your ego to the side. Like it's, it's, it's not a pissing contest anymore because mm-hmm. we all have the same goal. Cole, Cole, what did you learn with that experience of, you know, you and Brent linking up and starting as youngsters with the, with the nightlife scene and the event scene and all that? What, what, was, what was one of the key roles that you, key lessons that you learned through that process? Well, like Brent said, we had really three, four real big personalities, you know, and, and all of us had, um, you know, kind of, we're taking the lead, I guess you could say, because we're coming from our own, you know, our, doing our own events. And in that collaboration, I remember – Brent and uh, James sat me down one day. I, I kind of, we kind of took over our first spot. We were running it, and I was super business, just hyper focused on business and, and hyper focused on. I wanted to prove to them that I was going to be working. <clears throat> they pulled me to the side and they were like, "Man, we need you to be you. Like, we know you're all business, but that's up until the party. We need you when you get here. We need you to have a pregame. We need you to 
be the life of the party, buying people drinks, you know what I'm saying, mingling with the people. And I was like, damn, I kind of forgot who I was in this space. Mm -hmm. But I needed them to tell me that that was okay. You know what I'm saying? We we know you're grinding. We know you're working. But, hey, you you still got to be you. You got to, you know, handle your role pretty much. And from that point on, I mean, I I evolved as, I guess you could say, a promoter or throwing events because I realized, okay, Brent, he's I would call him the promoter. I'm more, as I would say, the facilitator. The facilitator. I'm facilitating. James is going to be the life. He's the energy. He's the lifeblood. But all of us together are, you know, we're a problem Package. as a unit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. We're, we're a problem. We're the warriors. <laughs> yeah. We, we <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But one thing about the humbleness, though, I just want, like, when it comes to being humble, if you're not humble, there's going to be a point in which you get humbled. Yeah. Absolutely. Facts. And that's going to hurt. Yes. Facts. So until you realize what it's like to be humble. Yes. Then, then you know you might be on the wrong trajectory, but that humbleness will it will, will guide you and take you to to the right place. And people notice that they see it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and honestly, I feel like people respect it. When you're Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you know I think one key thing in, in being humble is like because it's a word that's thrown around a lot, and people say I'm humble, I'm humble, I'm humble. A lot of humble people don't say that they humble. You know, it's the humiliation that you take mm-hmm. in your daily life, right? The humiliation you take in serving others. The humiliation you take. And um, providing for your family, the humiliation that you take in achieving things and giving the accolades to your friends, saying that you couldn't be there without your friends and mm-hmm. and with people supporting you and your mother and your father and all these different things. It's like you don't you don't automatically go to I did this right. Yeah. Yeah. You understand the key the key meaning of there's no I in team. And I think a person who is humble and who has a humiliation uh, is is a trait that a highly effective man has. Every highly Absolutely. effective man has that ability to be humble because, like you said, Colton, it's hard to get um, to the mountaintop without life humbling you themselves, right? Sam, see, what you think about see, that? See, my, my first experience with the word humble was really in a sentence, right? Like, I, I would hear people say, I humbly submit. Mm-hmm. I humbly submit. Like, I would hear that in church. I would hear, like, my aunts and them say that. So, like, to me, being humble means you're submitting yourself to whatever it is. Now, may that be the journey. You know that you're not bigger than the journey, right? Mm-hmm. So you can go in there and you can work your ass off every day because you know that the journey is where everything happens. Absolutely. Like you guys said, you were doing stuff on your own, but now you look back six, seven years, you're like, dang, what we've done over the six, seven years has gotten us here. Imagine mm-hmm. if we were right. going to yeah. the whole yeah. time together. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah, and that's what you started to think about. You're like, man, if I would have submitted to the, the idea of the journey way earlier, yep. just imagine what I could have done. But, mm-hmm. you know, are, are humans born to appreciate the journey or is that something that no. <laughs> is, it's kind of like it's, it's kind of like that is part of the esoteric knowledge of being successful right yeah. it's not common knowledge to appreciate the journey because if every human just woke up and appreciated the journey depend like look at look at like think about how the social system would be mm-hmm. classism yeah, yeah. Uh, racism, mm-hmm. all of these things would almost be abolished, right? Mm-hmm. Because everybody would understand that the steps that I take to get here are not my own. They're ba- they're based on the people that have supported me and got me here, right? Mm-hmm. One of the one of the common uh, things that we learn is that you know it takes a village to raise yep, a yep, child. Yep. So it takes your grandma whooping your tail whenever you a kid. It takes your mom getting on you. It takes your dad taking the video game away. Miss Johnson takes on a, the street, like, hey, disciplining you. Whoever. Yeah, yeah. Who, whoever your mama said they can tell you yeah, love. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? That was everybody. It, for it, yeah, it, right, you same on, thing yeah. here. <laughs> same thing alive. here. It it, 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 it it takes a village. So there's a saying that says, and I want to know what you all think about this saying. It says, seek first to understand, then be understood. So as a another uh, trait of an, a highly effective man um, is the hunger for growth, mm-hmm. right? So what does that, what does that, Sam, what does that mean to you? Seek first to understand, then be understood. It, uh, to me, it just be, it means become a student, right? Like even when student I was in of the school, game. yeah, when I was in school, we always had like student teachers and then they would become teachers. You mm-hmm. know I mean? It's, it's another part of the process. So it's just learn and then you can teach. You mm-hmm. can't really teach if you don't really know. I, I see a lot of people giving advice. They're like 18. I was like, bro, you ain't even lived yet. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? With, you know, 18 like, with a master like, class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 18 <laughs> with a master yeah, class. Like, who, yeah, yeah. Yeah. who you teaching? So it's like, get that experience, get become a master of it, and then you can teach. That's what I get from it. Cool. What you think? Man, one thing I, I like to say is, you know, finding that inner standing, um, 
particular book I read was talking about understanding versus understanding. I, oftentimes we go and seek knowledge from, from other sources, which of course you, you have to seek knowledge Absolutely. from other sources, from other folks, people who are mentors or, or kind of ahead of you in the game. But it's rare, I feel like, that we sit down and, and go within and think about how we can grow because we got you got the answers inside mm -hmm. if you can hear that voice, yeah. if you can sit and listen. So you can't sit. That's yeah. the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much we always want to be doing something wrong, <clears throat> trying to engage something. We're watching yeah. this we're playing. But sit down, man, and really reflect on yourself and just think to yourself and those, the answers will come. Absolutely. But it also let you know what changes you need to make. Yeah. Absolutely. It's uh the most critical person of you is you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and a lot of people avoid, you know, addressing things with themselves. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? They they, they run other directions, but you address those things with yourself, get that understanding, and then you'll, you know what I'm saying, you'll you'll find those answers. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Brent? What does that mean? Uh, um, how, how, how does that resonate <clears throat> with you? It's, it, to me, it kind of piggybacks a little bit off of what Sam said and be a student of the game. So I, I tell my son all the time, you know, the smartest person in the room is the person who knows nothing because you're willing to learn everything. Yeah. And so it's fun. I like that one. Yeah, fun. Too. Write that yeah. Down. <laughs> you said take notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> get, my, get, my, get my notes right. Yeah. And I have to tell him that because he's he's kind of like me. You know, he uh, he lives in the moment. He the city. Yeah, city yeah. too. Yeah, so <laughs> two point oh. So he so a lot of times I see some of the things that I used to do as a kid, and I see him doing the same things, and I'm like, well, hold on, son, wait a minute. Like, you don't have to do that. You don't always have to be the first to respond. Right. You don't always have to be the first to say something. Sometimes it's better to just sit back and see what everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm. yeah. 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 Fly on the wall and just listen yeah. and see what's going on and learn. Because I may think I know something and I have a perspective on it, but then you come and say something and have a totally different perspective. And you just you like, hmm. something. Yeah. You like, yeah. Now it's got my wheels turning. I was like, going to okay. say this, but I'm not going to say it no more. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. And so that will be my response. The smartest person in the room. Knows nothing because you're willing to learn everything. Absolutely, I like that. But Brent, let me ask you something too, because we just talked about what we would say to our 13 year old. So, mm -hmm. how do you find a balance of telling your son things that are going to guide him, and then letting him do what he does on his own? So I'm the I'm the type of parent where I want you to make mistakes, mm -hmm. but the thing with me is it's not about making the mistake; it's about not making the same mistake twice. Got gotcha. you. Right, and so that's, key. that's something that I that I preach. It's okay to mess up, right? But once you understand what you did and why you did it, then you shouldn't do that same thing twice. Yeah. And if you do that same thing twice, then that means that yeah, we got some more, yeah. we got some more work to do. Absolutely. Become aware. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And um, you know, I like I like that because so Brent, how how did having a son change your perspective on how effective you have to be? as a man because you now are solely responsible for the outcomes of a son. Well, it, it changes everything because now you realize that you're being watched 24 seven. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. <laughs> I mean, even from me taking a poop, like you're being, you're literally being uh -huh. watched everything. And so I, I see my son and everything that he does that I do, yeah. right? I look into his room. I see he has resistance bands. Why does he have resistance bands? Because I work out every day, right? Or I look in his room and I see he got Kobe Bryant posters up. Why does he have Kobe Bryant posters? Because he knows he's my favorite player, mm -hmm. right? And so it changes everything because now it's like, okay, well, hold on. Wait a minute, Brent. Like, you have somebody that is literally looking up to you, mimicking everything that you do. You got to turn this around. You can't be, yes, you're, 25 years old and having a kid, but you can't be 25 years old. Mm -hmm. It forces you to grow up. Real fast. Fast, right, which is not a bad thing because I think that had that not happened, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now, right? I, I would be on a completely different trajectory. As far as with promoting and, and, and business, it allowed, allows you to take it more seriously, right? And now you have a common goal. We first started throwing parties, and it was just like, oh, we're just doing this because it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, people ain't <laughs> had nothing to do on the weekends. It. And then it's like, oh, okay, we get paid to do it. You start making a little money. Then you have a kid, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, now you start finding the little things that you're not doing that can take you from good to great. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Being highly effective. Yep. So, question, <clears throat> what mistakes did we make in our 20s that's now <clears throat> affecting us today? 
man. Shoot, I, I can tell you. I need that. <laughs> damn lunch. Hey, we only got Wait, 20 yeah. minutes. I was about to say, we starting <laughs> the episode over. <laughs> what time on the clock? <laughs> man, I'm a, for me, I'm going to be honest with you. The, the mistake that I made in my 20s and it is, is, is finances. Oh, mm. I just, I, yeah. Absolutely. Time, I blew my first bag. I was <laughs> making money like so quickly that every time I would get money, Spend it because yep. in my mind it's like I'm gonna make this right back. Yeah, you gonna make it spend back. a check and get it right, it right back instead of having the mindset of like, hold on, just just sit for about a month, right? Just sit for about a month because this three thousand dollars you're making every two weeks can grow and eventually be thirty, mm-hmm. right? And now mm-hmm. you're twenty three years old with thirty thousand sitting on thirty thousand dollars. Now whether you gonna know what to do with that thirty thousand or not at twenty three is different, but to be able to have it, right? Probably will make your mind start doing things differently. Yeah. Because now right. you're starting to think like somebody that has a large lump sum of yeah. money versus somebody that's living paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. That's essentially what we're doing. Try to we, keep we, it. We, and at that age, especially in your early twenties, you know, we were th- we were throwing parties, and I still had a job where I was making great money plus the party money, but there was no, I, I didn't have any, any point of reference having that much money in my I'm like 30,000 yeah. that's a lot of bread right. it's not yeah. really that much money Mm-mm. but uh, that, hey, that yeah, age, yeah. I'm like 30 in my account I can do whatever I want uh-huh. I'm like, I can do anything yeah. I'm you going to magic it's a million yeah. <laughs> it's a million yeah. Yeah. I, I just like what can I buy other than a car <laughs> that would take all that away <laughs> nothing let's go to Atlanta <laughs> yeah. I'll live in Atlanta <laughs> but I would say along with that one thing that I you know a major mistake I made I was so gung ho about being an entrepreneur and wanting to be one that the first endeavor that that we embarked upon, I didn't cross my T's and dot my I's because I was just so excited about having my own business. Okay. So I didn't I didn't game plan. I game plan from a thirty thousand foot view as opposed to game planning the very strategic details, the day to day. And that was that was a mistake. I mean that was uh but I learned a lot from that. But that's something. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would have been all in the weeds, in the details. What's the day to day like? And I would have trained instead of running the business as if I planned to work it. I would have game planned the business based on somebody else being able to operate it because it was supposed to be residual. Okay, it became my primary because I never looked at it from the perspective of how what can I automate. I, I hate to say yeah. dumb this down, but how can I make it so anybody can do this? Mm-hmm. And that. But let's learn that now. That, that, we're running that, the club, we got to make it checklist. We got everything. Automate, Everything's yep. on paper. We need to be able to let That's that thing run. Operate we procedures. We have a good time somewhere else. <laughs> nice. And we can check the right. phones. We made some bread tonight. But you know what, though, man? That's that's the beauty of messing up, right? That's the beauty of messing up because those are little things that happen, right, that have a big effect on you, yep. right? Mm-hmm. We're so excited about just having the opportunity to do so that – we're not thinking it all the way through, right? And so it goes back to what I said about yeah, you can make the you can make a mistake, but don't make the same mistake twice. Mm-hmm. We're so excited about the opportunities to just be able to have a seat at the table, right? That we're not hearing anything else that's being said. We're not hearing anything else as far as numbers, negotiations, nothing. You say something, cool. Where do we sign? Right. right? Exactly. But then on the second go round, it's like, well, hold on. Yeah, I got a couple a questions. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, a couple yeah. questions. I, now, now, <laughs> yeah. now I'm probing a little. Yeah, I don't like right, how this reads. Right. I don't like yeah, how this reads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I've seen this before. Yeah. Right? Or, or, or the first time you don't have an attorney, the second time you do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. You, you, you yeah. start yeah. an accountant. An account, I, used to, I used to feel like, man, I can just do everything myself. Like, I'm not going to pay somebody. Or I assumed that it was going to cost a lot. Problem. Man. You'd be surprised. When I figured out, when I reached out to an attorney, like, hey, can you just handle this paperwork for me? Can you drop a contract? I'm like, oh, that wasn't that expensive. Right. Then I, my my boy hit me and was like, hey, man, y'all got so much going on. You need an accountant. I'm like, all right, you know, I really want to pay an accountant. The best thing I did was get an accountant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He handled all my taxes. Yeah. Now it's like, I used to stress out for a whole month, like, damn, I got I to gotta make sure I do that yeah. business taxes right and I got to do this and do Absolutely, that. Absolutely. Yep. You pay somebody to do it. Do what you're good at. Yeah. Focus mm-hmm. on what you're good at. What I'm good at when it comes to our business is you know, the graphics, the website, the lead up to the event. That's me. I'm staying in that space. That's why people mm-hmm. ask me why well, I don't do no work on my car. It's somebody that gets paid to do that. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm not about to be messing up my stuff. That's important, though. So my son plays on the AAU basketball team, and, you know, I help out and coach um, you know, for practice or whatever. But one of the main things that I preach is do your job, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Don't try and do somebody else's job because when you try and do somebody else's job, what happened? You'll lose. Yeah. Yep. You, don't, you don't do your job. Yeah, your, and job you your job is undone. Your job is undone. So 
that's important. That's key to, to what he's saying. Like, hey, know your role, right? And this goes back to being humble, right? Mm -hmm. Know your role. Don't overstep your boundaries, right? Do your job. Make sure that your job is done, right? And then hold the other person accountable and make Absolutely. sure that their job is done. Yeah. And, and I, to me, that's probably the biggest thing with, with us and, and probably with everybody in the room is being humble enough to say, okay, hey, like, yeah, this is a huge role, but this role ain't for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You got to know that. Yeah. And ask some questions. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, fellas, we got a new little mid-segment mid -segment conversation called hashtag fly conversations, right? So I'm going to give you all a scenario. And in 30 seconds or less, I want you to answer what you would tell this young man. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, an 18-year-old <laughs> young man has a kid. How would you recommend he manage his personal life in order to become a highly effective man by age 30? 30 seconds or less. Colton, go. Hey, you got to prioritize. That, that child is number one. Number two is, is yourself. Oh. You got to focus on your, your child and yourself because if you keep growing, that, that young man or woman is going to watch you grow, and they're going to grow with you. Nice. So still stay focused. Keep your eye on the prize. All right. Uh, let's bring go. Um, <laughs> I would say, don't get discouraged. Um, no, Cause you I, can relate. Yeah, I can relate. The, you were eighteen, but you were. I was, I was twenty four. Yeah. yeah. Don't get discouraged. Discouraged. You know, the the road to success is not always straight, and it's gonna be speed bumps, and it's gonna be you know dead ends. Um, but I would say, have goals and work to achieve those goals. And just because you don't achieve them in the time frame that you set, doesn't mean that they're still not achievable. Solid. So, Sam? Uh, I'll, I'll go along the same lines and just say make a plan, execute. I'm thinking about myself at 18 and a lot of areas in life I just didn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? That's where I learned a lot of lessons. So I would say make a plan and execute. Might not nice. be perfect, but, you know, nice. have something. Nice. I, I, know, I know we're getting short on time, so I just, I just had to say this. About the, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. About the journey, because I was, I was holding this in. <laughs> Man, the journey and – and why people don't embrace the journey necessarily. And I, I always run back to wrestling because that was such a big part of my life for the vast majority of my life is that you have to become, you have to find joy in the pain mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. getting to the pinnacle wrestling wise and, and in my wrestling career and, and winning state titles and all that stuff. When I actually won it, the first thing, or the first one I won, the first thing I thought about was, damn, I won this because I was nine years old, waking up at 5.30 in the morning oh to lift mm -hmm. before school or to wrestle before school to train. I was like, nobody else was doing that. Yeah. Early, I know other kids were around the country, but you know, I had to embrace the pain. And those mornings were terrible. Right. I cried yeah. damn near once a week, getting woken up to, to, to work out or train. And when I got to school, He's like, why are you so tired? Like, nigga, I had to work out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I done had a whole day. What do you mean you had to work out? Like, why you got more than workouts? I had a whole day but already. That also let me know that I was different, mm -hmm. that everybody can't do what I can do. Mm -hmm. And when you, you embrace the, the pain and stay in the moment, mm -hmm. not look into the future like, I hope I win this title it's here. The, it's, the power, it's the power of now. I lost now. this match two yeah. weeks ago. It's the power of now. Staying in that moment. Right. I think the best thing you can say at that point is saying it was worth it. It was worth yeah. it. Oh, like yeah. all the sacrifice. I remember like when I graduated, I went home, ate with my family, went home, sat in a chair, and I was like, it was worth it. it like, was. All the missed parties, all the missed times hanging out with friends, all yeah. that shit was worth it. Because you, you, you realize, man, you know, like just to sum it up, you know, being a highly effective man makes you look back and have hindsight. It makes you look back on some of the critical things your mentors teach you about being timely, about being humble, being humble, uh, having a mild temperament, uh, being an effective communicator, being spiritually balanced, being proactive, and being hungry for growth, I think are some of the critical, most effective traits that a man can have to be highly effective. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that if they have those tools at least and some other ones sprinkled in there, you can always put your right step, your right foot forward, um, and take positive steps towards growth, and re always remain humble, and and always understand. Hey, when you look at all these in these individuals like Warren Buffett, uh, Grant Cardone, Jay Z, Nas, anybody that has achieved massive success, they always have a strong team around them. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So um, being a highly effective man, man, very very good conversation. Clap it up, fellas. Hey.